So I have a couple of moderators today. Uh, my colleague Anthony Abinato is a PT. He works with React at um, the Wilmette Clinic and Ashley Honan, she works with us on the marketing and sales team and they'll be available via chat to answer any questions you might have. Um, they'll also direct any questions on chat to me. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure if I can see the chat super well while I'm in my PowerPoint or with my slides or anything like that. So they'll flag me down if you have anything essential. I can also, I'll also double check everything at the end to answer your questions um, when I can. I uh, just wanted to let you know there, um, I think that's all I needed to let you know. Anthony, was there something else I was supposed to tell them first? I don't think so. Uh, there's a PowerPoint of the lecture available online. Um, in the PowerPoint, there's some videos. I'm going to um, demonstrate some of the exercises that we're going to talk about just live here. If I can figure out how to share and unshare my screen. Um, there are some videos embedded in the PowerPoint. I'm going to try to figure out after the thing how to share just the PowerPoint too so that because you won't be able to click on the videos in the PDF. Um, there's also a couple of animations too because then you can browse through that. Um, but in the meantime, I'll just do demonstrations here. So there's that. Um, the only thing you need today for exercises is a TheraBand of really of any weight. Um, this is a blue one only because it's the only one that I have that's long enough to show the exercises that I have. I usually use red for this, but you can also use like a red. I love the Rogue Fitness bands, something like that. That would be really appropriate. Um, and you need either a door or a handle for one of the exercises, but if you don't have it, it's, it's not crucial. That's sort of the last exercise. Okay, uh, let's get started. So my name is Melissa Ludi. I'm a physical therapist and I'm the clinical manager at the Lincoln Park location of React Physical Therapy. Um, I wanted to have this little talk about yoga because I came to yoga many years ago because I'm built like my dad and I'm super stiff and I have been a runner and a soccer player my whole life. So I've only ever moved in one direction. So I was really tight. I could barely touch my toes. I couldn't get my arms behind my head. It was really a, kind of a rough, a rough go. So I, I came to yoga sort of looking for some balance in my physical activities and it's done like a world of help for me, but it can be a tricky practice because there's a lot of balance involved in yoga. Um, balance between body and mind, mobility and flexibility intention and acceptance. So we're going to talk about a little bit about that today and then we're going to talk a lot about shoulders and how to stay out of trouble. So today we'll talk about building shoulders, um, how to improve your um, practice with some shoulder work, getting strong, staying resilient, staying out of trouble, staying out of pain. Uh, everyone is really familiar with asana, which is the physical practice of yoga. These are the shapes that we make when we take a yoga class or we do a home yoga practice. But there are so many more incredible lessons to learn from the philosophy of yoga. Um, we don't obviously have time for any or really any of that right now. But I did want to bring up one small lesson that I think really relates. Um, and that's the concept of a Concept of ahimsa is a Sanskrit word that loosely translates to non-violence or non-harming. Uh, obviously, this translates to the outer world, non-violence, non-harming, other people, your community, that sort of thing. But I think we can also really think about it in terms of ourselves. Um, so what would this mean if you applied to, your, to yourself every single day, right? If we start thinking about self-care, and in yoga practice, we start thinking about strengths and weaknesses. If you were a very mobile, very flexible person, a lot of times we're drawn to yoga because it's easy for us to get into the poses. We can make the shapes. But maybe this means that in terms of your ahimsa, you need to back off a little bit. Don't go so deep. Work on the strength of your poses and not the depth. Don't harm yourself by overstretching. On the opposite side, if you're a super crazy strong person, maybe you don't muscle through all your poses, right? You try to breathe, you move a little slower, you let your body soften into those new places and you use sort of the rhythm of it rather than forcing yourself into these things that you know you can do because you can hold yourself in those poses. 
Um, one of my favorite yoga teachers, Danny B, he's a teacher here in Chicago, actually. He's always used to tell us, just because I can make a pretty shape, it doesn't make me a better person. And I, that always really resonated with me. Um, it's really about the fact that yoga is a practice. It's going to be different every day. Your body's going to feel different every day. So we need to listen to it and we need to not compare ourselves to other people. We need not to compare our bodies yesterday to our bodies today. Um, you know, the strength workout, the kettlebell workout we did yesterday is definitely going to affect our yoga practice today. So we need to keep that in mind and sort of constantly modify. Um, that being said, as a PT, I help patients make informed choices and blindly throwing yourself through a series of asana is not right for everybody. And really it's not right for anybody. Um, pose modification is crucial. And that's not actually something I'm going to discuss here at all. If you're having trouble with a specific pose or you're having pain with a specific pose, um, it's definitely a conversation that we can have one-on-one -on, -one on a more individual level um, so that we can problem shoot it. It's also definitely something that I would suggest you ask your instructor, your teacher, that sort of thing about. Um, there's a lot of modifications. Your practice shouldn't hurt. Um, what we're gonna talk about today is really prehabbing so that you don't have to ask those questions. But if you need to, we're gonna talk about it at the end. Uh, we're, we do free screens every day, telehealth, that sort of thing. So I have a lot of resources for you. But anyway, okay. Let me see if I can figure this out. Get into the slides. Think that worked okay so we're going to talk about building powerful shoulders elevate your asana prevent injury i didn't think about the fact that i was going to have to click i need to stand closer to my computer so why do we do off the mat work um the answer is because a little bit of shoulder work goes a long way in terms of elevating your practice a lot of the shoulder strength that we get in yoga is because we use our arms so much, but there is a lot of endurance and motions and movements that we don't do during practice that we need to train up in the outside. Um, we need to be able to create the balance between flexibility and mobility and strength. Um, this helps us prevent injury. It helps optimize our stability. It helps optimize our alignment, not only on a day-to-day -day basis, but also in our poses. And it also is gonna decrease the effort of our poses. If you can get your body in the position that it needs to be, it's not as hard. You don't have to stretch so hard. You don't have to fight so hard for those poses. Um, I like to think about, you know, if, if you're thinking about something really technical, like maybe you're working on a side curl, something like that. If you can work on the ability that you can twist yourself and get your arm there in that position, then suddenly the balance is there a lot easier rather than trying to muscle yourself into it and force yourself into it and like really wrench things. So the shoulder complex, that's what we're going to talk about most, it has the most degree of shoulder, uh, it has the most degrees of freedom of any joint in the body. It is capable of producing and withstanding tremendous force. Um, oh, I should have looked this up. I meant to do that. But uh, the amount of force that, for example, like a baseball pitcher creates when releasing a baseball is, is outrageous. And that's literally just releasing that small baseball. Um, your shoulder is used in virtually every pose in some way. And really, anytime you're using your arm, the whole system works together to avoid overloading any one area because it's when we start getting that overload that we get in trouble. So your shoulder complex, when we're thinking about the bones of the shoulder complex, we're thinking about the shoulder blade in the back, that's your scapula, the arm bone, that's your humerus, the collarbone, your clavicle, clavicle one of my favorite anatomical words. I don't know why. Um, and then your trunk, the rib cage, and the spine. So I brought this little skeleton to show us. So if you look at this, so here's the clavicle in the front, your collarbone. Here's the arm bone here, this red humerus. Here's your scapula. All of this is your shoulder blade in the back, both from this flat part, that's the blade, and then along here, that's the spine of scapula, and then this acromion process. As you can see, 
this joint is really just hanging out in space. That scapula is not attached to anything but muscles, tendons, and ligaments. So scapular stability is so incredibly important to maintain good scapular shoulder blade position. The joint is really just made up of muscles and ligaments. 17 muscles connect to the shoulder blade alone. That attaches the blade to the trunk and the trunk to the arm. Um, these connections help to initiate and control all upper extremity movement, whether that's your arm just lifting itself, reaching for something on your shelf, holding yourself in a weight-bearing position, lifting a weight overhead, doing a pull-up. I mean, all of these things integrate in different timing and different interactions when you're using your arms. So a lot of times when we think about like arm and upper extremity movements, we think about just the prime movers, which is you know, moving our arms up and down, lifting. We think about the deltoids, right? Which I mean, everybody wants that, the, the nice deltoid muscle. We think about the pecs, we think about the biceps, the triceps. The problem is a lot of that we're thinking just about the front of the arms, the arms and the shoulders, the chest, the arms, the shoulders. But if you have any aspirations to su succeed in any poses that involve weight bearing on your hands, you have to consider the muscles on the posterior shoulder. Uh, posterior is PT for the back of the body, anterior is the front, posterior is the back. Uh, posterior shoulder is where we get all of our scapular stability, our shoulder blade stability. It controls the shoulder alignment both in the plane of the body with the blade and then it also keeps the arm bone centered in the socket as you lift it. This helps prevent the pinching of the rotator cuff, helps you from collapsing into your shoulder like in your chaturanga or when you're trying to do crow or even in down dog. Um, oh, come back. This is the, what I was saying. I think I can get this so you can look at this because I wrote some little notes on the side there. Not that anybody really cares, but if you did. Okay, so here's the scapular stabilizers, right? You can see, here's the back of the body. These are some of the muscles that attach to the shoulder blade. In here, we have the rhomboids. There's bigger muscles in here, of course, that overlie. This would be the trapezius muscle, huge, upper, middle, lower trap, super important. We talk about that all the time superficial muscles. The lat. The lat is a massive muscle. It's a huge trunk stabilizer. It attaches your shoulder blade to your pelvis and is a giant um, torso mover. Super important. I'm not going to talk about that a lot now because um, a lot of people talk about that in a lot of different things. Um, deltoid, of course. But then underneath that, we have some of these smaller muscles that sometimes get overlooked when we're thinking about stability. And that's sort of your rhomboids here, your rotator cuff, which is supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, this is teres major here, and then serratus anterior. And you can see here, this is the rotator cuff, and you can see how this comes up. This blue thing is the shoulder blade. The rotator cuff, cuff comes up and underneath the shoulder blade in order to attach to the front of the arm bone, okay? So, if that shoulder blade is collapsing, if you're dumping into your shoulders, all these poor little tendons just get smashed and then they start to hurt and then everything gets really cranky. Your biceps tendon, it's not in this picture, but lies right in this groove here too. So same thing, if you start crunching in here, your biceps tendon is gonna get really cranky. So this is all like what we're trying to avoid. Scapular control. Sorry, I'm talking. Um, so your shoulder blade moves in a lot of directions. Uh, elevation is shrugging your shoulder blades up towards your shoulders. Depression is pulling your shoulders down away from the ears. Protraction is this direction. It's sliding your shoulder blades around your rib cage, okay? You're like rounding forward, but you're not hunching your back. Retraction is the opposite, pinching your shoulder blades back together I try to tell people like, like you're trying to pinch a pencil between your shoulder blades. There's upward and downward rotation. I'm not gonna get into that too much because these are motions that occur due to force coupling. And this is controlled by the balance of multiple muscles at the same time. We'll talk about it a little bit during one of the exercises, but optimizing the system really helps us control more naturally. Um, 
if you think about all of the 17 muscles that attach to the shoulder blade, they have to work in concert to make all of these motions happen. One has to contract while the other relaxes, okay? So if you're looking, if you want your shoulder blade to come this direction, say, like one has to contract and the other one has to relax, but if you're weight bearing, it's not that easy. They have to give and take, not just switch on and off. They have to be able to act in a continuum because they have to grade their contraction and lengthening and not just flex really hard and be rigid or relax completely and collapse because then they're just gonna fall on your face. So that's what all of these exercises that I'm gonna try to show you are just sort of slow, easy endurance exercises. You get the idea of controlling your shoulder blades, sort of time under tension. Okay. So the first one I'm gonna show you is scapular complex with a band, or a band come, comes in. I'm gonna to to show you three exercises to start. In this scap complex, we're first gonna talk about the retractors. We're gonna talk about retraction and depression. Um, we're also gonna play a little bit of that upward rotation into it. The, there, all of the exercises that I talk about, you could, easily sequence these just all together. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, loop them around in a circuit, super easy. I'm gonna break them up, but it definitely doesn't mean that you need to when you're doing them at home. And honestly, I think I have given you something, oh, I should know this in advance, but I think it's like eight exercises. And if you did two sets of 10 of all of them, it would take you maybe 10 minutes. So this is not a super uh, time consuming, um, exercise regime. So this comp scap complex with the band, oh, that says band, you can't see it because my face is there, sorry about that. Uh, the goal is to improve your ability to keep your shoulders down and back and create a stable platform. Um, it's focused on retraction and depression, mid traps, low traps, and rhomboids. We're gonna talk about three exercises. So the pull-aparts with your T's, the W's, and the abduction wise, just sort of like a T with a little lift. Um, I gave you this link to a YouTube. Like I said, there's some videos in my presentation and maybe I'll put them on YouTube as well. Okay, here are the videos in which I am like weirdly smiling like a deranged chipmunk against my fence at my house, but I'm gonna stop the sharing and I'm just gonna demonstrate this for you, okay? So the first thing we're going to talk about is, the, oh my gosh, I can see those videos. It's like really distracting. Okay, the first we're going to talk about is the T's. So what you want to do is, with everything, you're going to roll your shoulders down and back. But in that, I don't want you to really extend your thoracic spine, okay? I don't want you to always be coming this direction to get your shoulders down and back. I just want you to get a nice neutral spine, roll them up and back, and keep them there. Your arms are going to come up. Your hands are gonna face so your thumbs are up, okay? You're gonna get the band so that you already have a little bit of tension here, okay? Step over, because otherwise I'm gonna run into the closet. And then, so now you're in a T position. You're gonna pull out, squeezing down and back, squeezing, squeezing as hard as you can, pinching that pencil in between your shoulder blades. Come back in. And the key is to not let all the tension off when you come back in. I don't want you coming here so this is just a loose, a totally loose band. I want you coming all the way out, squeezing, 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 come back in. So all of these banded exercises, it has to do with time under tension and it has to do with the control. So the speed at which you do these really makes a difference. I want you to do them slowly. I want you to control it. And I want you to focus on the fact that you're building these small muscles endurance so that when you're holding your poses, they don't give out on you. So that's just a T. You can see why I look like a T. Second one is a W. Take your band, your hands face forward, up overhead, okay? And now you're gonna pull down. Your hands are gonna come apart so you end up like a W position. I'm still squeezing my shoulder blades, my elbows together in the back, like I'm pinching a pencil. Coming up, and again, I'm not coming so far that like I have no tension up here. Down and back, and then back up. Sometimes it's when you have to choke up 
a little bit more on the band than you did for the T's. And again, do about 10 of these, staying under tension the whole time. In the videos, you can really see that I have asymmetrical shoulder mobility and asymmetrical arm strength. This is normal. A lot of people have asymmetries. Um, clearly, it's something that I need to work on. Okay, the next one is a TheraBand Y. It's, we call it an abduction Y. Kind of a technical term because abduction is this movement out from the body. Um, but you're gonna start like you were in a T, okay? So you're gonna come here, pull out like a T, and then you're gonna lift all the way up as if you're lifting into a Y position. That's why we call it a Y and then come back down. And the key is that you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, holding that retraction the whole time. So you're squeezing them together as you come up, you're squeezing them together as you come down. Squeezing as you come up. They're staying back there the whole time, squeezing as you come down. In the video, I show just a small one because honestly, Sometimes people are not comfortable coming all the way up overhead like this. You get a lot of pinching in your shoulders and that's fine. Start here, come up in a small range of motion. Forcing yourself into pain or pinching in the front of your shoulder isn't gonna make you feel better. It's just gonna make you hurt worse, okay? So start in the range of motion that you could do it. I mean, if you have to start here, get to 90 degrees and come back down, that's where you start and that's great. Build it little bit by bit and you'll build the endurance of those stabilizers so that you can get those arms up overhead. Okay, back to the slides. Oh God, Glad I don't have to watch this later. Um, oh, I wanted to put a little asana application. So you can use specific poses as practice as well. Think about these motions and then consider the arm patient position in the variations of locust, for example, when you're face down and you're doing these T, T arms, right? Very similar. So you can do holds here, here when your arms are down by your sides. Warrior three, same thing. You're, you're almost in that, that um, Y position up overhead when you're doing anything, you know, uh, when your arms are sort of up overhead like that. So think about that. That's sort of like how you apply these banded exercises to what we're working on right now. Serratus anterior. Okay, so this is that little boxer's muscle that I showed you. So those little like fingers on the sides of the ribs. Uh, the goal of the serratus anterior, the, the focus of the serratus anterior is to control the protraction of the shoulder blade. It keeps the, uh, the scapula from winging off of the rib cage. Um, and it allows for that nice like rolling of the shoulder blade around the rib cage. Okay, this is critical for arm balances and planking. It really helps to keep that, um, the reason you don't want your blade to wing off like that is because when your blade's just winging off, now it has changed the length of all the muscles that attach to it. And that really affects their function. So we want to make sure that that serratus is playing its part in keeping the blade where it needs to be. So for serratus, there's two exercises. One is with the TheraBand, it's called the hug. This is what I was saying, you can work this into the complex. Oh, I wonder if I can make myself just really big here. Oh yeah, okay, secrets. Um, TheraBand hugs, we can work this into our TheraBand complex and then plank with a plus. I'm just gonna demonstrate plank with a plus, like fake, so just turn the screen sideways and imagine I'm on, on the ground. Um, so the Thera, with the TheraBand hugs, We'll do this. That's better. So you've done your T's, you've done your W's, you've done your Y's. This now comes around your back like this. Okay, thumbs are still up. You're here, and now you're hugging. You're reaching around. I'm not necessarily shrugging up. I'm reaching forward. I try to cue patients sometimes, like as if you had a giant tree in front of you, okay? You're trying to reach forward around the tree and then back. Uh, hey, Missy. Yeah. I think your, your PowerPoint's still shared. Oh, it's still sharing. Can you yeah. see? Okay, let me pause. Um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be able to see it better if you can unshare it. 
Okay. Got it? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, cool. Okay, hugging, back to hugging. So here, like this, imagine you're reaching forward around a tree, okay? So you're here, you're gonna reach around. Reach around. You can also go down this direction you can come up. You could also, if you're not at home and you're using a TheraBand and it's not COVID, you could do this with a cable machine. This is super easy to do with a cable machine. The next one is plank with a plus. To be completely honest, Anthony, you might know the answer to this question. I don't know why they call it a plus, but it's basically a plank position, which you add a little bit of protraction at the end, okay? So we're gonna act like I'm on the ground and I'm in a plank position, okay? So here I am with my hands in my nice plank. If I was to let my body sink through, I would have that big valley in my shoulder blades, okay? But to add my plus, I push into protraction, which means I push away. Push, 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 push. My back isn't rounding. I'm just pushing my chest away from the ground. Come down this way, sink. Push, 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 push. So you can do this in a regular plank. You could do this in a forearm plank. Sink, push, push, push. And anybody who practices like a pinch of Mayurasana, you know, like a forearm stand, will recognize this too. So when you go to get into a forearm stand, you really need to take this and push up and away to get that area to get your pinch of Mayurasana in there, okay? So plank with a plus. 10, 12 times. Another way that you can modify this is if you happen to have a home gym and you have plates, is you can do a serratus punch. You can lay on your back here, hold a plate up above you, and punch up and away. I like to do these when I'm at the gym and I'll just do endurance. So I'll take about like a 25 pound plate and I'll do it 25 or 30 times because it gets really, at first it's really easy but it gets really tiring really quickly. So that's for serratus anterior. Okay, back to sharing screen. Okay, well, here's my scary chipmunk. Oh, you can see that one a little bit better. Okay. Like I just said, you can use specific positions as practice as well. You consider the scapular position in your variations of plank and forearm plank, dolphin or L stand even. L stand is a great one to like kind of think about adjusting your shoulder position. Tried to take a video of this, but the dogs would not stop licking me. So it was very unsuccessful. Okay, next is like actually the rotator cuff. So. The, what the rotator cuff does is the rotator cuff holds your arm bone down while you're elevating, okay? It steers the rotation of your arm bone. Imagine this is like that shallow cup of your shoulder blade. We, we had that, that picture of your shoulder blade has this shallow cup. That's your shoulder socket. Your arm bone fits into it, and it, as you elevate, it has to stay in that socket. If only your deltoid pulls your arm up, your arm is going to slide up out of that socket. If your lat is super tight and it's holding it down, like maybe you can't get up there, it starts cramming. Your, what your rotator cuff does is it hold, sort of steers, okay? It steers the rotation of that arm bone in the socket as you move your arms up, as you move your arms into the, the variety of positions in your poses. Rotator cuff is the keystone of this whole system. It's a very shallow cup in the shoulder blade, okay? It's deepened by your labrum, it's a fibrocartilaginous, uh, socket, but it doesn't hold it in there altogether. The rotator cuff prevents impingement. It prevents the, its own tendons from getting worn. It improves the power and function of all other musculature. It's super important. Good news is you've already started working on it by maintaining your hand position in some positions, so you're prepping for it. So let's just add a couple of specifics. We're going to do internal rotators are um, the pecs are a very powerful internal rotator, so are the lats. So 
we don't do a lot of internal rotation strength unless you come in and you've got a, a pretty marked internal rotation deficit or you had an injury, et cetera, et cetera. Um, subscap injury, something like that. But we do a lot of external rotation training, so that's what I'm gonna talk about. Um, so there's two degree, like two ranges that I usually train in, zero degrees and 90 degrees. So I'm gonna stop this sharing. We're gonna talk about both of those. Okay. So back up enough so you can see this. So zero degrees, a lot of times if I'm in the clinic, I will take this side and I'll anchor it to something. So, you know, I'll have it like attached to a post and we'll do this in, in one arm. But you don't necessarily have to do that at home. You can just hold it in the other arm. Um, a lot of times if patients are really having a lot of pain, I will cue them. I don't have a towel. Oh, I need a yoga towel. I will cue them to put a towel underneath because that just gives you a little bit more space between the arm bone and the socket, just in case you're having any pinching. But if I'm doing a scalp complex and I'm just doing it as a warm up, sometimes I leave that out and that's okay. So external rotation at zero degrees. You can do it one arm at a time or you can do it both at the same time. Out and in. There's a couple of really common things that I see people doing. One is that they lead with their wrist. So they cock their wrist out this way. You can see that. Cock their wrist to bring it out that way. Okay. You can get a crazy amount of wrist extensor overuse that way. Great way to give yourself a tennis level. The second is that they start coming this way and then they just bend their elbows. That, and that way you're just using bicep, really. And the second is they come out this way, third, they come out this way and then they start elevating. Okay, so here's your cues. Your elbows are in, your wrists are super stable like you're gonna punch. Your elbows are always at 90 degrees. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, set yourself round down and back. Straight out so that you're almost gonna like elbow yourself on the side. Slow back in. Straight out, slow back in. Then I also added eccentrics. This is something that I've been doing with some of my patients and myself lately. So what we'll do is we'll say we're gonna work, this, this is my right arm, we're gonna work just the right arm eccentrically. I actually think this is a little bit harder than just the concentric work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the right arm out into external rotation, the arm is moving out. We're gonna take this arm, we're resisting that pull with the right arm, pull, 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 slowly bring it back in. Bring them both out. Hold this guy. Hold the right arm up. Hold, hold, hold. Slowly bring it back in. So you might want to start with say 10 concentric here and then 10 eccentric. Eccentric are really hard. They seem like they're going to be wimpy and they're not. The next is external rotation at 90 degrees. This is the one that I said you need a door. So you're going to take the end and literally just tie a little loop or a knot or whatever in it. Open the door. Oh God, I hope nothing falls out of this closet. <laughs> and you're going to stabilize it in there, like right about shoulder height, okay? Because I want to be able to pull back here so that my arm bone is coming pretty much straight out of the socket. It's a little hot, but it'll do. Here. Nice, tight core, tall spine, straight up, back down. Same thing, keep my wrist neutral, straight up, back down. For this one, the way you would do it in eccentric is you would come up here, step back, hold, then lower, step in. Up, step back, hold, lower, step back in. And here I am again at my fence. I just like you guys to know that I got very sunburned doing these. It was very sunny yesterday and it took longer to film them than I thought I was going to. 
So as an application for these, just really quick, is you can think about the specific poses in practice as well. Consider the external rotation and the variations of downward facing dog. So if you have your arms on the ground here, and we're thinking, can I rotate my arm bones out? That's external rotation, external rotation. Chair pose, same thing. Can I get my arms out, up, and then keep them rotated out? And then we're, what we're saying about pincha, sort of keeping your arms like in that 11 position. Can I keep my elbows in? That works with chaturanga too. Here, can I keep my elbows in and my hands flat? I already said this, but don't forget that yoga is practice. We're all on different journeys. My yoga won't look like your yoga. My practice today won't look like my practice yesterday. It's not a competition with yourself. It's not a competition with anybody else. Doesn't make you a better person because you can make a pretty shape. If you want more, we have lots of releases and exercises on our YouTube page. Maybe I'll put these videos on there. Just search for React Physical Therapy on YouTube. We've been getting tons of webinars, recordings, and slides on bereact.com slash events. Free injury screens and consultations are always available in person and on telehealth. Um, you can email my clinic directly at, which is Lincoln Park at bereact.com, or you could email info at bereact.com. Someone will get back to you. Um, feel free to be to contact us via email or call us or Instagram or anything like that, uh, that's fine. Um, my name is Melissa. Did I forget anything? I don't know, let me see if you, oh, there's all my information, there it is. Okay, that'll be on my, uh, the PDF as well. So, okay, let me stop sharing. Okay. Okay, Anthony, did you have anything for me that you needed? Questions, anything like that? Uh, there's one question from someone to me, but I got that. And then um, other than that, I think we're good. Hey, Missy. Um, someone did ask um, if you could share the proper alignment for shoulders in the downward dog. Um, it seems like you can kind of get it pretty, um, get it wrong pretty easily. You can. I just can't really in my guest bedroom. <laughs> so if that person wants to send me an email, then I am happy to like direct them to some sort of a resource where I can, because there definitely are, that's another situation too, where I was, oh, hi, I know you. <laughs> um, it it de depends on your body too, because it depends on your flexibility, your shoulder flexibility, that sort of thing. Um, it like, and how, where you place your hands and that sort of thing. So I, I will share a resource with, with the person if they send me a quick email, so. Okay, I don't have anything else. Great, okay, thanks for joining me. Good luck with your quarantines. Stay safe, stay healthy. Call us if you need anything, okay.